Hello friend humans, Lucas Levy Keppel here and I'm at the Blue Whale of Catoosa. This is one of the roadside attractions along Route 66 and uh, I'm starting today's vlog at the end of the trip. I rode out here from my home uh, and didn't take any footage along the way but now that I'm here uh, I'm going to take you along the journey back home. It is neat to be able to do something like that uh, to be able to show you some of the trip uh, from the perspective of the ride. I did ride out here on the Giant Rome 4, my, my new bike. It's about a uh, oh, 20 mile, yes, 20 miles uh, from home. So a pretty good ride out and back, a good 40 mile day. Uh, it is overcast, as you can tell, and not exactly the greatest day for uh, a lot of riding or seeing the beautiful blue skies of Oklahoma that I'm used to seeing. But you know what? Some days are like this. And some days you make it out to this giant blue whale. You know, from what I understand, this started out as a, uh, not as necessarily a Route 66 attraction, but a way for a family to uh, enjoy themselves. Uh, one of the, the uh, homeowners around here decided to use this pond as a swimming hole for their family and built a slide. And it became bigger and bigger and bigger over time until since it was literally right along Route 66, it became a roadside attraction and something that drew people from all over the world to see this, uh, well, fiberglass whale. <laughs> Let's be honest about it. According to a recent history that I just looked at for this uh, uh, blue whale, in 1997, the whale was refurbished, um, give it a new coat of paint, including a new pupil in the eye of the whale. And that pupil was uh, painted by Governor Frank Keating, uh, which is great. It just shows, you know, Oklahoma values some of these uh, local landmarks and the, uh, the way that the Route 66 brings so much to this state. This wooden arc structure behind me on that side is about all that remains of a former menagerie that was here. A uh, opportunity to see live animals and different things was, as roadside attractions often create more attractions nearby, this was one of those. Uh, you can kind of tell the dilapidated state of the arc and the, the various mushrooms and different things. This was a exciting and beautiful place to be at one point, um, and yet now it's deteriorated some over time. Yet there's still an attraction to seeing old attractions. Uh, and this continues to be an interesting sight today. All right, now leaving the blue whale and on the road here. Pretty exciting to be able to do this trip here. Cars going by. As you can tell, it's kind of a busy road to be on, but at least there's a little bit of a shoulder here. Uh, Turned out it was about 18 miles. I was, you know, rounding. <laughs> My spouse, uh, Ilana, always yells at me for uh, rounding in weird ways, but uh, I feel like it was justified in this case. 20 is pretty close to 18. <laughs> Still, it'll be good to get back home. While I was at the Blue Whale, just as I was pulling out of the uh, parking lot, ran into another cyclist who uh, has ridden a little further than I have. He said he started in Santa Monica and is riding the length of Route 66 till he makes it to uh, Chicago. Mostly following the adventure cycling route, um, which is great, but apparently the route hasn't been updated for a little while and there's some bridges that are out and some things. He said at one point he had to walk around um, and, and take a road that was closed in order to, to get where he was going. And for 60 miles, he didn't see a single car, another human even. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty scary experience. While there's lots of cars on this trip and obviously uh, a few bikes on the way too, I'm kind of glad uh, not away from humans for quite that long. I've had enough of quarantine, I think, and I know I'm not alone in that. Thank <laughs> you. 
sometimes along the byways of Route 66 you end up finding some interesting things along the way. Now, this happens to be at a salvage yard, so it makes some sense. But it is fun to see the old cars uh, presented as signposts along the way. So for most of this trip, I've been riding along historic Route 66. And this is no exception. This is kind of the more rural areas. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not being overtaken by a car here and there. But it is lovely to see cows and horses and mules and less lovely to see dogs that are roaming free on the way uh, out was chased by a couple dogs. Fortunately, they stopped at the end of their property, uh, by which I mean, they followed me on the main roadway until I was past their property line and then went back home. Oh, that's the one thing I do not like about cycling. I am not protected from, I don't know, mobile threats <laughs> like dogs. Don't get me wrong. The right circumstance, the dog is lovely, but I do not like dogs that are just roaming free. It's not my thing. nice to get off of Route 66 finally. Not that I don't like being on there, but you know, good to be back on a surface road for a little bit. proper. It's good to be back on cycling path. Oh, I don't mind being on roadways as much as I used to, but this is much, much better. Raindrops keep falling on my head, they keep falling on my head. Yeah. Unless at the bug. Raindrops, bugs, they're all the same, right? For as much as this trip has been mostly on roads, I do love taking these little cycle paths in the background. Ooh, steep hill. Forgot about this. Yeah. <laughs> Still, you should have a nice view of the park behind. And then, this is the actual cycling route. We uh, head out of the park onto a little side street here. And take a left. And another left. Because there's no reason we couldn't have had a bike path in between these places, except for, you know, houses. They get in the way sometimes. Aha! There's a sign that says dead end, but that's only for cars. We cyclists can take the cycle path right across the bridge. <laughs> Granted, this part of Mingo Creek is not the prettiest, but still beats being on the main roads and run down by cars. <sighs> Back on Mingo Trail. <laughs> Let's see. 
turn you around this way. This is where we're going. It's nice to know that when I'm close to home, these sort of easier paths and less trafficked areas are possible to take. But as you can probably tell from the state of my glasses, there's water coming from the sky. So I'm gonna keep riding. And we'll make it back shortly. Oh, hello friend humans. Here I am, back at home. As you can tell the rain Kept coming down a little bit. I did uh, not put on my raincoat, figuring I'd make it back in time, and I did, though I'm a little more soaked than I would otherwise have been. Thanks for coming along with me on the journey today. It was nice to share the, the ride and the opportunity to see the Blue Whale of Katusa by bike. I uh, hope that you'll check out some of the other videos in this series, um, the Keppel's vlog with hiking and biking um, and bike packing and camping things. So uh, stay tuned, because here in June, I'll be uh, taking a rather significant backpacking trip uh, into the Colorado Rockies, and I'm very much looking forward to it out in Pocosa Springs. Thanks for coming with me. Have a good one. Bye-bye.